Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany together with... The Malted Man Cave. Hello, guys. Thanks for having me on, Jason. And Malted Mondays. How is everybody doing? So Happy World Whiskey Day. We have different time zones here. I'm in Germany. It is now 10.30 p.m. And the other two guys are Eastern Standard Time, so it's 4.30 p.m. for them. What are we going to drink today is the big question. Well, um, with Keith, I'm going to drink something from Kentucky, the Yellowstone Select 93, very interesting, as well as the Crossroads here from Compass Box. And then here with Paul, we're going to do the Bunahabin, 12-year-old, yay. And to keep it a little bit international, we have the Redbreast 15 from Ireland. So, gentlemen, how did you start your whiskey career? Keith, why don't you go first? Let's see. So I've told this a bunch of times, and I always tell a different part of the story. So I kind of hated scotch at first. <laughs> um, and I kind of, you know, beer and then wine and then... Some of my friends, they, you know, like, oh, we should try scotch. And is, is, is it still there? It looked like it went out. Yeah, you're still there. Go on. It was cutting out. Um, so have you guys seen the movie Anchorman? Yes. With Will Ferrell? Of course. There's a fan. So we were in, I think I was in high school or college when that came out. And there was a part in there, you know, Will Ferrell's character, he's obsessed with scotch. He's always like, scotch, 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 down in my belly. Mm -mm -mm. And so we were out and about at, you know, a, a bar in college. And we went up and I was like, you know, I don't really want Bud Light. I don't want Bud Light. I don't want Milwaukee's best. I'm going to try something new. So I was like, well, I'll get some scotch. <laughs> so I tried it. I had like, I'll take three fingers of Glenlivet and they poured it, the bartender poured it, and I absolutely hated it. So I acted, <laughs> I acted like I loved it. Like, mm, this is so good. I get notes of apples, citrus, <laughs> lemon peel. <laughs> you know, so after that, it was a no go. I didn't drink it for a long time. And then my brother in law, who's an F 16 fighter pilot, he kind of got into it. It's a big thing in fighter squad squadrons to drink, you know, good bourbon and good scotch. And I tried it with him, and I think. He, was it Glenmore G10 or Glenmore G Kinta Rubin? And then I just caught the bug. And ever since then, I've just been obsessed with scotch. And I still like beer and wine, but I, I can't, as much as I like it, so I can't go back. Like if I'm going to waste I calorie. Like you kind of just slip in the, my brother's an F16 fighter pilot and just keep on going. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he was stationed in Germany for a while. So I think. Or near, I think Ramstein or somewhere around exactly. there. Exactly, down there in the southern part of Germany, only about five, 600 miles away from me. I'm all the way up in the north. Now, Paul, how did you start drinking this wonderful thing we call whiskey? Um, the opposite of uh, Keith, I uh, really didn't like beer. So <laughs> I just stuck to rum. And then when I went to Ireland, um, I went to the uh, the Jameson distillery there and tried whiskey for the first time and man that was rum i liked old like aged rums but uh they're still just a little sweet sometimes and trying whiskey for the first time was uh that's what got me so while i was there i picked up the first bottle of whiskey i bought was also the most expensive for a long time um but red breast is that after that i was done whiskey all the way Excellent. All right. So very, very good. So today, World Whiskey Day. So we have different things in different areas. Um, if you didn't see the stream with Roy beforehand, we're going to be going around the world. After me, we'll have Whiskey Whistle in um, Korea. We go back to the UK with Roy and have a nice thing there. Then we're going to hand it over to Scotch Test Dummies and then on to Whiskey in the Six and so on. And they'll end with Food Quig. Uh, the master um, Jedi of whiskey with all his um, wonderful bathroom breaks and so on. Um, <laughs> now, plug your channels just a little bit while we try the first whiskey here. Um, so, Paul, Malt Mondays, that's not something everyone knows about, I think. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so I, I think I started Malt Mondays because when I was just starting out buying whiskeys and buying scotches, um, I noticed that a lot of reviews were done in a vacuum. So, you know, people were reviewing Glenmore G 18 year old, for instance, and they were saying, wow, this is, this is okay. But they weren't comparing it to Glenmore G 10 year old or to Glenfiddich 18 year old. So for somebody that hadn't tried 
you know, a lot of different things yet, I had no frame of reference for these reviews because there were people hating on these 20 year old scotches like, eh, it's okay, you know, but what I wanted to know was, okay, well, but is it bet that much better than the 10 year old to be worth the extra money? And that, that was kind of where I started Malt Mondays from, was trying to give people reviews that were reviewing the whiskey on its own, but then telling them how I felt the value compared to some similar bottlings. All right. Well, I would actually say, morning. go on. Paul, well, I would actually say one of the things I was really impressed with your channel, about how old are you, Paul? I'm you 24. Mind? Like it is amazing how much you know about whiskey at your age. Like it is truly impressive. You know, like so, not every whiskey channel that's out there. Tr like a lot of people, you know, just maybe want to be in YouTube or some people like really love whiskey, but they don't know a lot. Like you actually know a lot about it. And I would say the same thing about you, Jason, as well. Like out of all the channels out there, both of you guys know quite a bit about whiskey and it's very impressive. Thanks. <laughs> Well, my whiskey channel is all about in English on um, the rare and exotic whiskeys that I get my hands on. And um, my actual YouTube channel is in German. Every single day I post a, a nice little review of a whiskey I have. I have another 800 whiskeys in sample um, bottles waiting to be tested. So I have about um, four years worth of um, work in front of me because new bottles keep on appearing on the market and I keep on buying new stuff yep. where my wife says, um, stop, but it's like, well, that's difficult, <laughs> isn't it? There's ways around that, Jason, you know. We all have our ways. <laughs> now, the Malted Man Cave, would you like to explain a little bit about your channel? Not everyone knows you either, Keith. Um, are you down in your, in your man cave? I'm down in the man cave. Um, Dave is not here with me. So I, I kind of started the channel by myself. And then my buddy Dave, he really wasn't really into whiskey, but he was like a good friend. He wanted something fun to do. And he likes bourbon a lot. And then I slowly have kind of got him into good scotch and then higher end bourbons and low end bourbons too. So the reason I started it is first of all, I just love whiskey. And when you love something, you just want to tell other people about it. And when I first got into it before I created the channel, there was, you know, qu quite a few channels, but there would oftentimes you could go type in a whiskey and there would be no review on it. So I was like, well, well, maybe I could help kind of fill that void. I love doing yeah. it, just something to be a part of. And I often tell people, and I've said this in a couple other live streams, if I was hadn't started it now, I probably wouldn't start it now just because everybody and their mom has a whiskey channel now. But again, there's still whiskeys out there that if you type in, you still want to find it. So I guess, I guess it's still a good thing. So. Most of those whiskeys I've tried to do a nice little review on, and it's very amazing how many whiskeys are out there that people ignore that are not from Scotland, especially the Irish. And there are many, many European company countries that actually have whiskey, Germany, France, Italy, Czech Republic, and a lot of other places as well. And so it's just not Scotch malt that is out there and enjoyable. So let's go a little bit to the bourbon here. Keith, we wanted to taste something with um, Yellowstone, unfortunately a source whiskey. I was at the Limestone Distillery last year in the summer in Kentucky, and um, I drove by without stopping, unfortunately. Have you ever been in that area of Loretto, Kentucky? I have been down there, um, just driving through, I think on our way down um, to Florida or something like that. And, and me and you, obviously, we had spoken off air earlier, and you asked me if I'd been to the bourbon trail living in Ohio. And to my shame, I still have not been to any distilleries in Kentucky, which that will be remedied shortly. We're going to go this summer um, for my birthday with friends um, for my birthday weekend. Um, nice. But I had actually heard of this whiskey. I think it was Jason from Jason Whiskey Wise. I asked him what his favorite bourbon was so far. And he actually said that this was his favorite bourbon. <laughs> so I actually just picked this up not that long ago. And, you know, it was like the first bourbon I saw when me and you were talking about what we were going to kind of drink. Um, have you opened this yet? What do you think about this? Yeah, I did a review. I brought it back from the States last year. Um, so you can take a look at this. Um, wow. What I do over here is what's legal. I do, bo I do bottle shares. And so people actually buy um, 5CL or 10CL um, sample bottles, and I can send them with the mail legally over here in Germany, which is very, very nice. 
and it doesn't have to be declared as any type of um, oils or anything else. It's a little <laughs> difficult sending yeah. things up to the UK, but within Germany, it's legal to do so. And so this has been um, killed by a lot of my bourbon friends, and I actually got, belong to a group. Um, it's called Bourbon Lovers um, Germany on Facebook, and we share a lot of bottles together, and this was one of them. Uh, yeah, America needs to get with the times with the whole shipping alcohol thing. It's ridiculous. Well, America had prohibition. Don't forget that. So it's going to take a while for them to change any laws. And you have know, <laughs> 50 of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so how much do you like this one? As I get this into is a nice, but what really disappointed me was it's a sourced whiskey. So I could have taken something else and I also had that. Um, it is from Kentucky, though. That is important. So probably I would guess... My personal um, guess is it's a Four Roses, but I don't know. What do you think? Is that the 93? It is. Uh, I have more? <laughs> I don't. Um, I've had the regular Yellowstone in the past, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I have and, that uh, bottle over there as well, which really was one of those. I bought it from France, and it was like, oh, why did I pay that much money for it? Yeah. <laughs> so It's not good? It's not good. No. No. So I, I have okay. not I have not tried the ninety three because I was scared off, but um. <laughs> it's not quite as good as the hype that Jason hyped it up to be. It's still a good quality bourbon, and I I didn't spend that much money on it at all. I don't even know if this was thirty bucks. No, I think I paid like twenty eight dollars in Kentucky where I bought it. Yeah, I think it was twenty seven twenty eight bucks. So for a twenty seven twenty seven U S dollar whiskey, this is pretty dang good. I like exactly. It. I think I bought it at the um what is it called liquor barn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I was in Louisville, and so, come on, last year I drove up from Dallas, Texas, all the way up to Louisville, and then did my three days of the bourbon tour and drove back down. Um, it's really an interesting and um, great thing to do. I don't know if it's always the best time to do it in July, like I did it. Eric um, oh, um, ex explained here, um, Eric Watt, that um, Watt, or wait, wait, Eric Wait explained that he's going to do it right before Christmas, and as long as it doesn't rain, it's a good idea. Paul, have you ever been on the bourbon trail? I uh, I haven't, sadly. I was planning a trip to Scotland this summer, um, and I got a new job, so that got forestalled until I uh, cruised some vacation time. But um, hoping to try and get to Kentucky this year for a long weekend uh, with some friends at some point. I've got a couple of bourbon and whiskey guys here in town that uh, I get together with. That they go up there every couple of years, so. All right, so we got some interesting people in the chat. I'm just going to name the whiskey dick. Bill, good to see you there. Um, you once said contact you when you have a thousand subscribers. Uh, in German, I have a thousand two hundred, um, <laughs> but not in English. Malted in Montreal. Swami was the first person I ever did a live stream with in English. Once again, thank you very much for that privilege. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple other people here. Um, Eric White, as I've mentioned a few times, is there, and other people. And that's very, very good to see that this Whiskey Day, World Whiskey Day, is really being celebrated. Also, the Whiskey Rev is there. Ooh, what a privilege. Very nice to see you. We have 69 people watching. Um, my top stream was in German. Over 120 people actually worked, watched. And that's a little bit of my... Um, one of my limits is the only, the only people that are from Austria, Switzerland, and or Germany can usually understand what I'm saying. And so our our field of population is much, much smaller, but yet it's it's a lot of fun to do that in German because there's a lot of other people out there doing it in English and basically right. no one is doing live streams in German at the moment. So what's your favorite bourbon, guys? <laughs> I'll let Paul go first. Oh, oh geez. Um, all time favorite? <laughs> I would say Michter's 20 year old. Ah, um, I saw, yeah, that was your first, yeah, yeah, you can get a video about the 10. Recently. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been lucky enough to try that on two occasions. Never lucky enough to buy a bottle or rich enough. <laughs> to, yeah. But, How uh, much does it go for? How much does that bottle go for? I think regular price is like 500 or 600. I can and get it 400 over here. I actually have a video of 20? in German on the Michter's 20 as well. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty pricey, but I would say normal bourbons, uh, probably my favorite is Four Roses single barrel. I really like the, I really like the stuff they put out. I've got a few of their special editions from like 2015 and whatnot. Yeah, they, 
That's good stuff. I get snicker bars on that Four Roses single barrel, like snicker bars on the nose and when I'm yeah. drinking. Yeah, this is the uh, 2015 small batch. It's probably one of the best bourbons I've had besides um, Booker <laughs> Booker's, uh, their anniversary bourbon, their 25th. Was that good? I haven't yeah. had that. That and their rye was mind blowing. Again, not lucky enough to buy a bottle. <laughs> wow. Um, blind Whiskey Review wrote in German. Ich muss los, genieß den Rest deiner Zeit. So please enjoy the rest of your time. I have to go. Very good to see that. Thank you very much. So very, very good. And yes, Horst and his son Benedict actually do live streams every once in a while, but my live streams are every week, um, 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. over here. And so I'm basically still the only one doing that on a regular basis. Now, Keith, what about you? What's your favorite bourbon? So I'm about to speak blasphemy, and people are going to probably go and unsubscribe <laughs> from my channel. Um, well, don't, don't unsubscribe to my channel. Unsubscribe to your channel. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not going to blame you. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to go with the best bourbon that I've ever had. And that includes going against George T. Stagg. Wow. Elijah Craig barrel proof. Really? <laughs> I, now, I would probably say George T. Stagg is like the slightest bit better, but it's so much more expensive that I got to go. This is my favorite. It's, yeah. it's, it's like a hair better. And so now. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Bottle of boom. You can't beat Bottle of, wow. The value for money. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. I, I never get it, sick of it, ever. It's just so much flavor jam-packed into just one glass. It's, it's crazy. Wow. So if I'd have to answer that question, I'm going to go for Eagle Rare 17. I just love that, even though it's unbelievably expensive. But every once in a while, I buy a bottle and share with some friends. And um, every once in a while, once a year, maybe. And that's one of the things that I just was like, oh. And the amazing thing, the Eagle Rare 17 was maybe the, like, the eighth or the ninth bourbon I ever had in my life. Someone gave me a bottle and said, Jason, try this. This is good. It's like, oh. and then I went online and found the price. And I went, oh. <laughs> 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 it was amazing. Yeah, I still I'm haven't to try that one. I me want neither. To me neither. Eat Speaking people. of Eagle Rare, and I, this is going to be my my uh, shameless plug for later this evening on my live stream tonight at midnight. I'm going to be doing an Eagle Rare giveaway. I'm going to just have like a, nice. a you know a trivia question, and whoever gets it, you know, first can get this bottle. So it's pretty dang good. It's, I bet it's nowhere near as good as the Eagle Rare 17, but still a pretty dang good bourbon. For, I got this for $28, the Eagle Rare. So every once in a while over here in Europe, we have something very special. This is called the Whiskey Exchange. And this is actually um, the 2017 BTAC. Wow. I know. Isn't that nice? You got every single one? Well, they oh, so set. Yeah. And actually, a friend of mine said, Jason, um, the Whiskey Exchange has something online. And I bought two of these, and they were gone within like 25 minutes. They were basically 50 euros for this, for all six. So I'm paying less than $10 per sample, which is unbeatable. And wow. so I'm going to actually do a series of BTAC in English and in German for the 2017. And so that's a very, very special um, thing that we have over here, which you often don't have in the States. So the Whiskey no. Exchange, they, do they still, are they still selling them? And if so, how much? They were sold out in 20 minutes. It, right now, we, we can't even get it um, in the States. What is it? Master yeah, of Malt. Masters of Malt stopped after they were bought by Budweiser, whoever bought them. Really? I thought it was like an issue with like their importer in New York City, like there was some issue. No, so it has to do with a... There was a nice little um, nice little video online about that. And um, it's basically because they're going to set up their own network in the States, and they stopped doing that now because they're cool. not going to compete with each other, with themselves. Gotcha. But there is going to be a way that us Americans can kind of order from Probably them. in the fall of 2018 before that be awesome. dried up. I wonder if that will make it cheaper if it's not. It might so. due to the postage. I don't know. We'll see. But, of course, it's one of those things from states to state. There will still be dry states where you still can't send it to it because of the, of the legal requirements and the law. So who knows? Yeah. All right. Yeah, now, I'm su I'm Paul, what are you jealous of on? Ordered that. <laughs> uh, I poured myself the Four Roses 2015 limited edition small batch. Um, since BTAC 
here in America is harder to get than it is in Germany, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's a price. Um, I actually b just bought um, the, the 2017 um, William Lauer Weller and the Hardy, and I paid um, over 800 euros for both of those bottles. So yeah. you can get it, but you have to pay a price, a premium price. Yeah, that, that, that's true. I could get it if I was willing to pay secondary. Yes, we don't have anything except for secondary over here. So there's <laughs> got, no other okay, choice. That's fair. I got kids to feed at home. <laughs> Forget the secondary markets, man. Very, very good. So um, let's move on a little bit from bourbon and let's go to the wonderful country of Scotland. Um, we have something from Compass Box. Now, Paul, what do you think of Compass Box? Are you into blended whiskeys at all? Yeah, I, uh, I love Compass Box. I've gotten to... Talked to some of their reps before, um, done some events with them, some tastings, and I really like their entire approach to whiskey. And also, I think they make really high quality stuff. Um, I was just talking in my Johnny Walker Blue review about how grain whiskeys and blended whiskeys get a bad rap. And I think anyone that thinks that should just go try a bottle of hedonism. Um, and I think you'll immediately forget any bias you have against grain whiskey. <laughs> I totally agree. There's, I actually have a 50 year old from Cooper's Choice grain whiskey. Oh, that's so great. But there was only 250 bottles of that produced in the whole world. Wow. And I had one of them and it was so good. But grain whiskeys over 20 years of age, anyways, are, are just fabulous, fabulous monsters of a pure goodness. <laughs> So what about you, Keith? Have you had any? Oh, I, I, I think it's no secret. I have a man crush on, on John Glazer. <laughs> I, I would give anything to be <laughs> I like right that, now. a man crush. <laughs> <laughs> My wife even knows about it. <laughs> like, I mean, he just has the dream job. I mean, would, it, would you guys love to have created that company and own it and be a, every day oh, get yeah. to go in and like mess with whiskeys and makeup? Like, that would be the dream. <laughs> I actually need to give a little bit of a shout out. George Kaplan, who is an amazing friend of mine in the whiskey fabric, I assume you guys probably know who he is. He, every once in a while, um, supports the channel by sending these like ginormous samples. And so I am drinking some <laughs> Compass Box Oak Cross, courtesy nice. of George Kaplan and his beautiful wife, Amy. So well, this thanks. is actually how the bottle should look like. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real true colors. <laughs> I'll take it. Free 99. You can't be a free 99. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Free is always great. I think I, I only paid for the Oak Cross. I, it wasn't even 30 euros over here. So it's about, what, $35 at the moment. I think the reason I love Compass Box the most is because Klein Leash is probably my second favorite distillery in the world. Uh, and oh, yeah. They use one bit of that, right? What's up? What is they your use, first favorite? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of the Compass Box blends, like Klein Leash is just features prominently. And I think that's what makes it magical, in my opinion. And what's your first favorite distillery, though? <laughs> you know what it is, Paul. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> I, I need to, like, shut up about it and stop reviewing Springbanks. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows me as a Springbank man. But, hey, it's the best whiskey in the world. I just have on my YouTube channel, if you look at it tomorrow after watching this marathon of YouTube um, live streams with Ronald, R-A-N-A-L-D. He's a sales manager at Springbank. I just interviewed him two weeks ago at the Kiel Whiskey Fair. It was a very, very interesting interview, about five to six minutes long. He described everything. Wonderful, wonderful man. Speaking of, what is your two guys' favorite? If you had to pick one, gun to your head, what is your favorite distillery? Scotch distillery. Let's just think. You want, you want to go first, Jason? Um, I really have to think about that. I don't know. Um, I have concentrated a lot on the other world whiskeys, and I have kind of neglected the Scotch, even though I have a whole wall full of it over of it over here. Um, off the top of my head, I do like Ockentoshen sometimes, but um. What else would I like to have? I like I like Oban actually. Oban is actually one of my things where I go, wow, that's nice. And you? Yeah. Oh man, <sighs> probably overall favorite distillery I would say Kavalon. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't actually reviewed any of their whiskeys, but I own almost the whole range. <laughs> uh, but the uh, the Kavalon Solist Vino 
is the single best whiskey I've had, I think. Uh, right up there with the Bowmore 25. Um, so they look Kavalan, of course, here from Taiwan. Very interesting. This is not the Solus, but it's a it's at least the concert master. Um, but very, very nice stuff here. I yeah. still need to, to try that Solus. I hear it's magical. Um, one Cavalon. I've I've got enough. I can send you a sample. I've got some of the Fino. Uh, yeah. I've got enough. I'll get some samples put together for you. Darn it, I'll fly. We never did get around to that, did we, Paul? No. <laughs> So send it, send it to Ohio. <laughs> it won't I make it over to, here. I sorry, Jason. I, I, I'd love to send you some samples, but I tried to send some to, to Roy, and it was going to cost $200. <laughs> $200 to send, like, five or ten samples. I'm like, uh, wow. Roy, I love you, but no. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> <Not doing that. laughs> if it was that major, you would have said yes. I'll buy you a bottle from Master Malt and have it go to your house. <laughs> That's actually much cheaper. You're right. There you go. Put in your credit card. <laughs> very, very good. So um, the Oak Cross, what do you have? What's, what's your nose on this? I can definitely tell Klein Leash, Klein Leash is there. Um, and you get all those like sour, sour bourbon notes from the bourbon cask. Is this 100% bourbon matured? I'm pretty oh, sure it is. American and French oak barrels. So there is some cherry, is some or do you think it's French? Here, yes, which would be French the cherry oak. influence. Hmm. I got like peaches and apricots, like sour mandarin oranges. Very much so, I agree. Good stuff. Wish we could I, pour you a dram, Paul. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. I actually, I have a little bit of the uh, spice tree around here somewhere, and I've done them side by side, and I they're very similar. Um, I was actually just looking That's for the That's a good bottle. question. I have the spice, spice tree here, not the extravagance, but the normal spice tree. Let's try that. I've never done that. I've never compared the two. Yeah, because uh, I think they both use the French oak and the um, and the traditional, like, ex bourbon cast. So they both get a little bit of that those extra spices. The spice tree just has a little bit more of it. Um, and I've personally found, I think, the oak cross is – of like the Asyla, the Spice Tree, and the Oak Cross. I think the Oak Cross is the one that fits me the best. It's kind of like the, I don't know, most balanced. But the Spice Tree is one of my very favorite blends. Have you guys had the Extravaganza? Yes. Yeah, I love it. It's Do you, do you think it's a little bit better than the regular? Or what do you think? Uh, it's just a little more intense, a little more dark. Um, yep. the, the rep from, uh, compass box actually gave me a sample of that and a sample of the three-year-old deluxe, um, Ooh. which I actually still have mm -hmm. and stashed away, you know, for a rainy day to do a so, review on. Are you still working at the, at, at the store? Cause don't you look work for a liquor store? I did. And I got a new job with an engineering firm here recently after graduating. Hence why I haven't been posting videos in the yeah, last couple months. Yeah, I was going to slow down a little bit. Makes yeah. sense. Been Life working for... about 50 hours a week instead of 30. So <laughs> at least you have more money to probably buy whiskey now. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's the upside of it, I guess. Now the spice tree is much. There's more cleanlish in there than the um, the oak cross. The oak cross is much lighter and fruitier, and there's more citrus, and that's more of a. Um, the first word was waxy, and a little bit of um, mahogany. Um, a little bit of that woodiness is comes through more here with the spice tree. I prefer the spice tree more than I do the the oak cross, but that's just me. Yeah, I, I would agree with you, for sure. Hmm. I think Nigel uh, Slynn said he's got a sample of the extravaganza. You should open it and try it. It's very good. I might actually go pour a little bit of mine. <laughs> well, <laughs> very good. Maybe. Now, um, Paul, you want to come over to Scotland one day. Have you ever been over here to Europe? Uh, I've been to Ireland and Germany and uh, Hungary. <laughs> And okay. England, but I haven't gone to I haven't gone to go to Scotland. So that's my next major trip is uh, go to Scotland. I'm gonna crash on Roy's couch. Uh, he doesn't. <laughs> not that he knows that, but he doesn't know that yet. But it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> I'll be there too. 
<laughs> no, I was planning on crashing on his couch as well. So who knows? <laughs> Maybe we're all down in the basement one day drinking his supply of whatever. <laughs> I've already been casing out his liquor collection. <laughs> uh, yeah, wasn't there some Brora in there as well? Yes, there was. Yeah, which I, I, uh, he was very generous and let me taste some. <laughs> I, you guys I saw your that? your blind taste. Uh, that you were trying to figure out what Roy might have sent you based on what you knew he had in his collection. That's what he said. That's shenanigans. <laughs> that's that's I not true. I believe him to he be honest. That. That's, I mean, he has like what five hundred bottles of whiskey. <laughs> so no, probably. It's Brora is it's it's not peated like you think it would be. Like I didn't even know there was any peat in it. Like I literally thought it was Klein Leash or Ben Rene's. <laughs> so it's just like barely there. At least in my opinion. All right, I've only had the, I don't well I don't haven't had Brora. I've only had the Port Ellen, and I'm not a big Petey fan. And the Port Ellen really wasn't up my alley. Do you, you both of you like Pete, Don't you? Have? Which expression did you have, Jason? It was a uh, the 17th release, I think it was called. I'm jealous. Well, a friend came over. I had a whiskey. We do. I do a um, whiskey tasting once a month here at home, and I and was talking to this one company I work for. I'm an English teacher as a second language, and he said, "Oh, I like whiskey." And I said, "Come on over." And he said, "Okay, good." And he just brought out this little tiny 300 milliliter of um, 350 milliliter of um, Port Ellen. And said, "Hey, at the end, let's try this." I was like. What? I said, this is a 400 euro bottle that you just pulled wow. out. Oh, I bought it for like 80 euros like eight years ago. And I didn't know that was, I said, don't open. He said, yes, yes, I'm here with friends. And it was like unbelievable. <laughs> That's it's, awesome. it's, it's amazing. Some people really don't know what they have. I'm jealous. My, uh, my friend James found a bottle of Stitzel Weller bourbon from 1938, I think, in yeah. his, his uncle's basement. His uncle, you know, passed away and had like some stuff there. Um, and man, that he he gave me about that much of it. In, insane. Like some of those old old whiskeys, like they just don't taste anything like whiskey today. It's yep. it's kind of crazy. So, what's the oldest whiskey you've had then, Keith? What is the oldest whiskey that I've had? So I mean the distilling age, not the actual fifty right, years or seventy now? years. I don't care about that. I think the oldest whiskey that I had, I think, along with that whole Aquavite, you know, blind challenge. I think he sent me. It was like a thirty-four or a thirty-six-year-old blended like grain whiskey. I think I can't. It was a Glen Elgin. I, I really don't remember what it was, but I think that's like thirty-four to thirty-six-year-old is the oldest that I've had. I don't think I've had a forty. What about you guys? I've had some you probably had like an 60, 80-year-old whiskey. No, not all your whiskey, Jason. <laughs> So um, what I have in my hand here, this is a very, this is almost a unicorn. Um, this is actually a spirit. This is not a whiskey. I think you can take a look at the bear, uh, that thing. It's 49 years old wow. and it's 29.5%. It's below the 40%. Therefore, it cannot be called whiskey. Wow. So a friend of mine actually bought this and he gave it to me. This is not very expensive over here. I mean, the bottle is very expensive. It may be $200 for the bottle. And um, this was actually bottled in Scotland by the whiskey broker. And um, this was a Ben Nevis, 49 year old. And it's just Jeez. so below the 40% they they can't put enough other whiskey in it to pump, pump it up, up back up to the 40% to sell it as whiskey. And so I'm going to review this one day to see what a 29.5% 49-year-old Ben Nevis tastes like. That should be very unique. Ben Nevis is amazing. It is such a hidden gem that I don't think a lot of people in the States know about. Yeah, I've never uh, never had the chance to try it. You would love it. I had an like a Ben Nevis 17 year old, I think from the exclusive malts, it was the fruitiest. It literally was like candy and it was like <laughs> a cast strength. Like you could not taste the alcohol. Like literally it tasted like I'm like chewing on like Laffy Taffy and like fruit. Like, yeah. it was, it really, that's, you would love that. Nevis. That sounds up my alley. Yeah. yeah. Just last night I had the privilege of having from, there's this place in the space side. It's called the Highlander Inn. 
Now there's this Japanese guy that runs it and he was at the Limburg Whiskey Fair here in Germany, one of the biggest European whiskey fairs that we have. And I walked along and I saw these stand. I actually interviewed him as well. His interview is also on my channel here. And he started talking. He has a very thick accent, Japanese accent, not, not like my German accent, even though I was born in the States. And he said, here. I said, what's that? He says, yes, we as a Highlander Inn, we buy a barrel or two a year and we bottle them. And sometimes we have them left a couple hundred bottles left over and we sell them to our distributor. And it was a 20 year old Ben Nevis, um, also um, cast strength. I, I judge my, my, my whiskeys with like a school grade, A, B, C, D. And I just, this is an A. Oh, this is so good. It was just <laughs> fabulous. And if you can find an old Ben Nevis, and especially if it was in a sherry cask, I promise you, if you like sherry whiskeys, you are going to love the Ben Nevis. <laughs> when I make my way to Scotland, to Roy's, I may uh, make my way to Germany and stand out your house just begging for some of that Ben Nevis. <laughs> 49 year old. <laughs> Please. Uh... <laughs> I bet you that's amazing. Well, the whiskey Rev just wrote that he was at the Highlander Inn just last week, and he took Roy there. So this is one of the places oh, to be awesome. if you're ever in the space side. So go there. I can highly recommend it. It's interesting how the world's so small sometimes. So should we move on to something else? Now, um, Paul, you and I were going to talk about the Buna Haben, 12-year-old. Yeah. You actually reviewed this on your channel. Now, um, you had the 12 and the 18. I do not have the 18 here, so we decided to do the, um, 12. the 12 here. Yeah. Um, what do you especially like about this? So I think what I enjoy so much about uh, about the Buna Haven in particular, let me find a fresh glass here, um, is one, they're not using any peat, or it's like 2 or 3 ppm or something, you know, it's as mild as it can possibly be, but they still have that coastal flavor, which uh, Old Pulteney gets as well. Um, they get that kind of coastal sea salt kind of flavor, even though they're not um, they're not adding any peat. So, but it still tastes like it's from the coast. And Old Pulteney to me, or not Old Pulteney, <laughs> Bunhaven to me also gets like a really dark candied fruit flavor to it it's not it's not like the sherry flavor that you get with like mccallans and space ciders yep. it's more of just like somebody like you walked in like an old like dried fruit shop or something and and yep. and mixed with the sea salt like the laffy taffy kind of almost kind of thing it's like it just makes me think of dark fruity candies and salted caramels and it, it's a little bit unique to me in that regard not I love Budahaven is so good. Yeah. It's, Not to mention awesome. the fact they're non chill filtering and bottling at 46%, you know, <laughs> at $50. Like, yep. what were you going to say, Keith? I, because I, I got the privilege of trying the, the Budahaven 25, which Ooh. is absolutely fantastic. Mike from Mike and Billy's Whiskey Review, we kind of trade the heels of our bottles so that he can review it and I can review what he does. And it is amazing. Like, it is so good. And he got it for, like, a crazy price. They made a mistake at the liquor store. I think it's supposed to be, like, three, 400 bucks, and he got it for, like, 230 bucks. Wow. Um, but I will say even this, as amazing as the Bunahaven 25 is, the 18 is still better for the price. And so is the 12 for the price. Both the 18 and the 12 are just unreal for, like, how expensive they are, how good they are. Totally Do you guys get dirt? I get all that, like, chocolate, all that candied fruit. All like the candy nuts that you talk about, and then I feel like this almost smells like they throw like a little dirt in there with it, like you know from the Dunnage warehouses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't it does sound good. good. Like it that. sounds like it'd be disgusting, but it's really good. I don't. I know. think maybe that's like that umame kind of flavor. Yeah, on the back, like it's definitely like an earthy, earthy, savory. Yeah. Very, very good. So um, what do you have here, Paul, if you s nose this whiskey? Do you have the dirt from the from the warehouse? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But then again, like the sea salt is in there and those dark fruits. I The one thing I like about the 12, well, the 18 and the 12, the, 
this is something I try to tell people all the time when they ask, like, is older whiskey better? And I try, I try to tell them, like, sometimes, but usually it's just different. Um, because, like, Lagavulin 8-year-old is one of the single best, I think, best whiskeys I've had. Like, I just love that bottle to death. And it's 8 years old. Um, yep. But the to me, the 12 doesn't get any of, like, the oaky notes yet. So, so really you just get the salt and the caramel and the, yep. the a little bit of sherry that's going on there, but it's more like really dry sherry. I really want to read this quote from Raster here. He's thought, he said, I thought my bottle of Bunahabin 12 had an aroma that was almost like a sexy aroma. body odor. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I saw that cut. Please tell us more about that, Raster. <laughs> oh, I like that one, Raster. <laughs> Very good. Keep those coming. <laughs> Imagine it's a hot woman, <laughs> sexy body odor. Please, I'm just imagining a nasty, big, hairy, sweaty dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was just thinking, what sex is Raster? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's more of a manly than it is a female here. To each his own. <laughs> I know, to each his own. <laughs> I'll, I'll toast to that. <laughs> Oh, uh, very good. So what can we expect from you in the future? Let's start with you, Keith. What are you going to do on your channel in the future? So I have two videos. Um, here's a big surprise. We're doing Henry. We just shot Henry McKenna 10. And after that, I did a single review of the Springbank 12 Burgundy. Big surprise. I'm doing a Springbank, which it is amazing. I got it for like 90 bucks. I'd pay 150 for it. It's, it's so good. So if you guys see that Springbank 12 Burgundy, have, have either of you had the chance to try it? Mm -hmm. Have you yeah. tried the new Hazelburn, the 13-year-old? No, I want to. Have you? Yeah, I had a sample of it from Randall. Um, uh, that was very, very interesting because I'm not a t PD um, smoky guy, and so that's the that's the most I can manage. <laughs> um, so it sounds like you like triple dis distillation because you like the Irish whiskeys. I think it sounds you like Akintoshin and Hazelburn because those are both triple distilled. Is, is that kind of your your wheelhouse? But I do like Mortlach, um, and that's a, not a ton, more of a double, and or one two point eight percent, I guess, is what they say. So um, it doesn't have to always be that. But I'm not into that um, Isla whiskey. I'm not really that um, smoky PD type of guy. Sorry, I'm watching the um, Scotch Test Dummies do their um, Make America Pete again, yeah. and it's just like not nah, my wheelhouse. Sorry, guys, it's good that you're doing it, but I just really cannot um, compete. But maybe. I'll have a similar um, I, a career like Scott has had that he didn't like it at the beginning either. He was more of the Sherry Munster guy, and now he's actually enjoying the Pete. But I'm not I'm not there yet on my journey uh, adventure. I hated it for the first year, too. Like, I thought, I was like, this is the most disgusting thing. Why would I drink something that's, like, decomposed vegetation and, like, manure in my whiskey? No, thank you. But I, I can't get enough of it now, so <laughs> I would just just – Every once in a while, I'll just give it a try because that's what I did. Yeah. Like I just I, drank my sherry, my bourbon matured, and my my bourbons. And every once in a while, I just try like a peated, and finally it clicked. Yeah, I got myself a bottle of Lagavulin 16. It was the first peated whiskey that I bought, as I had like just passed an exam or something, and been studying for like really hard for a few weeks. I'm like, I'm gonna celebrate. This is. I've heard this is really good. I've watched a lot of reviews. I had no idea what Pete was going to smell like. The first glass of that whiskey, I was just like, damn, I, I wasted $90. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be able to drink this at all. It's terrible. And I just had to force my way through the first, like, third to half of that bottle. And by the time I got halfway through it, I was having three or four glasses at once. You know, it was it was going quick. It just it really just grew on me. Yeah. Definitely. So no nonsense whiskey wrote. We're all drinking dinosaur urine. <laughs> <laughs> then what are you talking about? Wow. <laughs> So I still haven't been able to force myself to drink that third of the bottle Lagavulin 16. Every single time I do my whiskey um, tasting events here, I always have a, a peated or smoky whiskey at the end, and it's still not my, still not my cup of tea. Who yeah. knows? It may never be. That's okay. Or for us, you don't There's need the whiskey out no there. Don't say you gotta love it. Yeah. Don't <laughs> no say you gotta love it. Just leave it for us, man. <laughs> yeah, it's all terrible. We'll do. We'll don't do. buy any of it. 
Uh, do you, I sometimes when I do reviews and I'm like saying how good it is, there's like a little part of me I'm like, I don't know if I really want to like hype this up because I'm not gonna be able to find it. Not that a ton <laughs> of people really watch my channel or anything. <laughs> Go to the hell. Yeah. That, that, ah, no nonsense. Whiskey says every drop of water on the planet has already been here, right? Ha ah, ah, ha ah. ha. All right, now, um, Paul, we have to make a decision here. Mm -hmm. Do we go for the red breast fifteen, or do we go for the red breast cast strength twelve year old? I think cast strength twelve year old because that's the I one think that we have the Buna Habin, We should go to the cast strength exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a little bit too too light there. So yeah, that's, my that's left hand good. shoulder. I'll pull this out here, and this is a this is maybe the best. No, I'm sorry, I cannot say that. This is the best red breast you will ever ever have. The twenty one year old. Have you tried this? I haven't. I was about to order a bottle the other day. This was <laughs> my. Uh, mm, I, this is my favorite whiskey. This was my whiskey wow. of the year, two thousand seventeen. Jim Murray has had it on his list now for the last, I think, four years as one of the top yeah. two or three each and every time, with a good reason. This is so fantastic. It's a hundred and about seventy dollars over here, but this bottle is all oh, very, 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 very nice. Good. Enough of my enthusiasm. <laughs> No, I've never seen a bottle of that on a store anywhere in America. So I'm going to have to just order one online at some point um, because Red Breast to me is one of the most unique distilleries. And also it's uh, this bottle, the cast strength is the one that cemented my whiskey fandom for all time. So it holds a special place in my heart. I totally agree. Um, I just I enjoy that as well. You actually got into whiskey in Ireland here with the Red Breast, didn't you? With Jameson yeah. Distillery. Yep. I I went to the Jameson Distillery and well, I thought I, mean, I correct you. There is no Jameson Distillery. Were you in Dublin? Yeah, the so distillery an experience. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I. Beat heads out there for all those whiskey nerds. The first time I went there as well, I was like, "Where's the distillery? <laughs> it's a museum." Today, there's a little bit of a micro distillery there, but that just opened up a year ago. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's definitely an experience, but it's if you're in Dublin, it's worth going. And, you know, if you're looking for something to do, they kind of show you how whiskey is made. It's, you know, if it's your first time or you've got someone with you that's not into whiskey, it's a good introduction. Let me put it that way. I wouldn't be impressed now. <laughs> That's the problem, exactly. Go to Teeling, you might be impressed. If you mm -hmm. really want to go and be impressed, go to the um, the St. James Cathedral. There's Pierce, um, Pierce Lloyd, an amazing, amazing building. And hopefully by the summer now, I'll be in Ireland this summer, the um, Dublin Distillery will actually hopefully be open by August. Um, we'll see if I can get there and do a video and have a couple interviews with some interesting people there. That'd be really cool. So that's one of the things I love that. doing is those interviews with people that actually make the stuff we drink. Do you guys know what the, the casks used are for the Red Breast 12 cast strength? Because to me, it, Red Breast 12 cast strength is like the Irish Aberlauer Abuna to me. It just seems mm -hmm. like there's a ton of first fill sherry casks. I don't know. What do you guys think? They do use sherry casks. I don't know how much is first fill or refill. I have no idea on that. Doesn't it seem like it's a ton of first? I'm not saying all first fill. It seems like a lot, just how like strong the flavor is. Could you, um, Paul, tell me what your batch is? I have batch B117 with 58.2%. What's your batch number? Uh, B113, and it's 59.9. See, there's a big difference. 59.9 versus 58.2. That's yeah. cast strength for you. Yeah. Um, it. I was trying to see if it says on the box anything about the cask used, but I don't think it actually does. Um, Anybody in the chat a mixture of American ex bourbon bales as well as ca uh, sherry casks, but they do it not is. say. I think it was a 70 30 mix, is what I read someplace once, but um, more 70% bourbon and 30% um, sherry casks, but nothing about first fill, nothing about second fill. Um, George Grant, actually here from Glen Fackles, I've met him a couple times. He actually says his favorite um, cherry casks are the second fill. The first fill are a little bit too dominant, and the mm -hmm. second fill give that nice little for the 12 to 15 year old um, 
just the taste that he looks for and what he wants. And unfortunately, he uses them a third, fourth, and fifth time. But yeah. that's something else. Yeah, that's when it starts not being so good. So was he a nice guy? Was he? He seems like a really nice guy. Yeah, he's a little bit like you. He's a he's a little bit of a let's say comedian as well as a uh, as a good guy. That's awesome. My only problem was he was here once and then he was here next the next year and he basically told exactly the same jokes with exactly the same story with exactly the same um, point uh, each and every time. And it's just kind of like, well, you're repeating yourself one year later. So, yeah, yeah the uh, the first Phil Sherry cast can definitely be a little too dominant. I have uh, the Balvenie 15 single barrels. Some of those are definitely either first fill or like second fill that only have whiskey in them for like maybe a month or so. Like, cause I have two bottles of that and one, it one looks like McAllen and the other looks like Bowmore black, you know, like the, the color difference and the flavor is you would not even know they were remotely similar whiskeys. Um, one is, that. yeah. Cause you, all you can tell is by the color, but when you take out the one that's, you know, in the more prominent sherry and you taste that, it's almost like someone just added sherry, you know, into the whiskey instead of maturing in a sherry cask. It's, it's intensely different. And I, I think I'm on the fence of, or on the side of, I like a little bit of first fill, but predominantly second fill because otherwise it really takes over. Yeah, you got a lot of those raisins and a little bit of those, um, just a lot of that that sweetness in there that not every whiskey really should have. Now, Keith, what's your favorite Irish whiskey? Um, let's see. I'm going to have to – I know this isn't very original, especially since we're just talking about it, but I've probably only had seven or eight Irish whiskeys, and the Red Breast 12 cast strength is the favorite out of anything I've had. <laughs> so Nice. All right. I need, to, I need to delve more in, excuse me, into the Irish whiskey world for sure. <laughs> Be careful. There's not a lot of good stuff out there. Most of the things are just basically um, either from Cooley or from Bushmills or maybe from Middleton. The good stuff now coming from West Cork is okay. Ten-year-old is not even sourced. It's still sourced. It's not their own. Um, then you have the Dingle, which is very, very interesting. I will be in Ireland this summer. I'm going to visit nine, maybe ten different distilleries that are just starting up um, I will be the quiet man up in um, Derby. I'm looking forward to that. Derry, I'm sorry, not Derby. Derry, and I have a couple other. Glen, Glendaloch, I'll be visiting also their business center because they still source the whiskeys. Um, do I have that here? Wait a second. I just brought that up, I thought. Um, they have that with their Japanese oak, um, the 13-year-old. That was so delicious. I don't even know if it made it to the States or not, but over here in Europe, it really did make a very, very, very big splash. So what yeah. would you recommend for like anywhere from like 60 to 150 bucks, a really good Irish whiskey? Obviously, I've had the 15 Red Breast, the 12 Cast Strength, Jameson. Yellow what Spot doing? is really, really good, just not as heavily sherried. I saw that the other day, Green Spot and I saw Yellow Spot. So both of them are just specifically Yellow Spot. Uh, they're both really good. They're, they're definitely more on like the apple-y, nutty side of – Irish whiskey, um, not as heavily sherried as the red breasts. Um, so think more along the lines of like a much higher quality Tullamore Dew or something. Um, yeah. And somebody was asking here in the chat what we all think of Glendronic. And I, oh. I figured we should uh, respond to that here. Why uh, not? Because it's fabulous. Yeah, exactly. Glendronic is. I mean, the prices are starting to go up now that it's getting scarcer. But for a while there, it was probably the best buy you could get in sherried single malt scotch because it was you were drinking Macallan 18 for half the price. You know. So if I can recommend one, that's the Green Spot and the Chateau um, Louisville Baton. Um, oh. That's the Green Spot. And it's actually in the red wine cask finish. Very, very nice. And if you want to try something um, peated, if you go to Connemara, but go to the 12-year-old, it's a little bit more expensive than the other. You really do notice a big difference in the quality between the no age statement of 12-year-old if you like um, an Irish with peat. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I've got the Connemara cast strength and the Connemara 12. And those are 
some interesting t- flavor profiles with peat on top of Irish whiskey. I'll definitely keep an eye out for. It. I'll probably have to order them online because I don't think I've ever seen them around here. But those those do sound good. Very very good. So we're almost at the end here. We're going to stop in a couple of minutes so that whiskey whistle um, can. In Korea, we're going to hand over to Korea now. Um, I'm going to have to try to place this here in the chat so you can actually click on it and follow that. Now, um, I didn't ask you, Paul. What can we expect from you in the future? Oh, um, so I'm. I've got a friend, Brandon, who's a, a cigar aficionado, um, and as someone who's always enjoyed cigars with whiskey, uh, I'm planning to do a little bit of a mini series with him here in the near future of doing some cigar and whiskey pairings. So I'm going to be giving him some samples of some readily available scotches from lighter scotches to the sherry to the peaty stuff um, and having him pair cigars to them and then come over and we'll do a little bit of a video on each um, to give people some recommended pairings and just rules of thumb for that uh, because I've actually been asked that quite a few times in comments on my videos, uh, like suggested cigar and scotch pairings, um, because I think they do go very well together, but I'm not much of a cigar aficionado. I like cigars, but um, other than that, I'm uh, I'm getting ready to do some more Japanese whiskey reviews because I've been, I've done a lot of scotch for like the last 20 (laughs) videos or so. So I'm going to be doing... um, the Nika 17 year old here. Um, the Nika 21 year old. Um, and then finishing up my Hibiki lineup with the 17 and 21 year olds as well. Um, so that's that's basically what I've got planned for the near future is Jap- going into some Japanese whiskeys and then Uh, doing a little bit of a special on cigar and whiskey pairings. That's awesome. Do you like Japanese whiskeys better than scotch? Is that kind of your... Uh, I'll I'll say Hibiki Hibiki and Kavalon are probably my two overall favorite brands. Um, But they're just like a little bit different. Even though they're single malts or, you know, blends of malt and grain whiskeys and made in the Scottish style... There's something about that Mizunura oak that adds just something a little bit different to the flavor profile. And they, I think the Japanese have a really good way of making a really subtle whiskey have a lot of depth and flavor to it. Yeah. All right. We're going to have to wind down here. I've just posted the... Um... The YouTube link here for Whiskey Whistle, I just took it from his site. If you do not know, um, just go to Whiskey Whistle. You'll be able to find him there. That's the first link that pops up here. Seven people are already waiting. Um, So that's a good thing to know here. Um, I'll post the channel also in the chat. So one last final statement, gentlemen. Where can we find you, Keith? Um, the Malted Man Cave on YouTube. I think it's all one word on Instagram. The Malted Man Cave, all lowercase, on Instagram. And I think just Malted Man Cave on um, Twitter. So thank you so much for having us on, Jason. It was an honor. I, I love your channel. And I love what you're doing with all like the rare and exotic whiskeys. It's nice. Oh, where can we find you? Um, I am Malt Mondays on YouTube. I think it's Malt underscore Mondays on Instagram. And then I can't remember for sure on Twitter. Uh, I'm not as active on Twitter. I mostly use Twitter to follow Aquavite and uh, keep up with some of the other guys' live stream events. Um, but I am fairly active on Instagram when I'm you either out, you know, trying to whiskey at a bar, post a little just blurb of it, like a mini review kind of thing. Um, so it's worth following me on Instagram, but mostly YouTube. And thank you so much for having me on, Jason. Uh, when I saw everything that was happening today, I was sad that I hadn't uh, contacted Akavite or uh, Roy earlier and gotten in on it. So I'm glad to sneak in the last minute here. 
Great. And it was a privilege having the two of you as well and all the guests here that were watching. Whiskey Jason, please go to the purple page. Otherwise, you'll if you're in the orange page, you're in the German. If you speak German, follow me there as well. That's what I do with my Instagram, with my Facebook, with my Twitter and all that. But everything else is just in English on the purple Whiskey Jason. All right, let's go to Korea. See you guys there. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See you guys. Thanks.